The past is a mystery that can only be solved by sorting through the things our ancestors left behind. Unfortunately, those things often turn out to be puzzle pieces that don't quite fit together. We think we know a lot about the cultures and civilizations that lived before us, but occasionally archaeologists come across something that challenges our understanding. Everything you're about to see in this video fits that description perfectly. An experienced archaeologist is likely to have seen many different types of human burial during their career. So when a burial tradition that no archaeologist has ever seen before is identified, it tends to be newsworthy. Such is the case with this discovery from Holyhead, Wales. The people who were buried here during the Bronze Age, some 4,000 years ago, were placed inside stone-lined cyst graves in a crouching position. They weren't laid flat. They were placed as if they were ready to spring up and take anyone who opened the graves by surprise. They even had food and drink vessels placed alongside them to sustain them during their long wait, or, more likely, on their journey to the afterlife. Very little is known about the community who lived here on Holly Island, but their burial customs are so unlike anything seen on the British mainland that it's possible they existed in isolation from the other Bronze Age communities around them. Amazingly, the same archaeological survey that found these remains also located a previously undiscovered 2,400-year-old Iron Age roundhouse village. We know that this is a generalization, but broadly speaking, people who lived in the West are taller than people who live in the East. Here's a surprising discovery which proves that hasn't always been the case. In November 2017, archaeologists working in China's Shandong province came across a 5,000-year-old burial site full of the remains of adult males. There are no women or children buried at the site which is itself unusual. But what's stranger still is that the average height of the men buried here is 1.9 meters, or 6 feet and 2 inches. That's only the average height. Some of these men were considerably taller. That's far taller than the average height in China today. 5,000 years ago, when people all over the world tended to be shorter than they are now, these men would have seemed like giants it's likely that they belonged to the Longshan culture, which flourished in regions close to the Yellow River during the late Neolithic era. They're known for their relatively advanced agricultural techniques. Perhaps their rich diets helped them to grow taller than their peers elsewhere. Let's stay in China for a moment and take a look at another buried oddity. Aside from using different types of casket or sarcophagus to bury people in, Different ancient cultures in different places around the world also varied in opinion about what material makes for the best burial shroud. Still, archaeologists thought they'd seen it all until they came across a man wrapped in cannabis plants in October 2016. The discovery was made in the Jiayi Cemetery in China's Turpin Basin. Scientists have carried out radiocarbon dating tests and concluded that this man passed away between 2,400 and 2,800 years ago. He was put in his grave on a wooden bed, with a reed pillow to rest his head on, and a sort of blanket made from 13 cannabis plants draped across him diagonally. He was most likely a member of the Shubeishi culture. Powdered leaves and cannabis seeds have been found in Shubeishi graves before but this is the first appearance of entire plants. The experts think that it's possible that this man was a shaman, an idea that's backed up by the fact that these particular cannabis plants are rich in THC, a very psychoactive chemical. Archaeologists usually have to go digging for their discoveries, but occasionally they get a helping hand from nature. The snow and ice of the Alpine passes are melting at the moment, especially on and around the Kniedejok Glacier in the Bernese Alps. And as the ice recedes, ancient artifacts are being revealed. The most astonishing of them is Atsi the Iceman, 
a Chalcolithic era ice mummy who was found in 1991. He's 5,300 years old, making him the oldest mummy in European history. Other highlights include a quiver with arrows and a pair of leather trousers from 5,000 years ago and a leather bag from the same era. It's possible that the bag belonged to the same person who owned the trousers and the arrows, which gives us the strange image of someone stripping off their outer layers and leaving them behind as they walked across the Alps all that time ago. It's very likely, although not proven, that the Alps were an important trade route thousands of years ago, so many of the items dropped here were more likely lost accidentally by traders than left behind deliberately. It might even be the case that poor frozen Otzi was a traitor. The site of the ancient Roman fort of Vindolanda, close to Hexham in Northumberland, England, has proven to be a rich hunting ground for archaeologists in recent times. Excavation efforts are ongoing, and new discoveries are made almost every week. Some of the most remarkable artifacts recovered from Vindolanda in the past few months are these hippo sandals, an ancient Roman type of horseshoe. The four equine shoes are so well preserved that we can still see the tread, a detail added to the shoes to prevent them from falling off the horse's feet. Archaeologists have been able to date them to the first century. Nine Roman forts were built at Vindolanda over the course of the 500 years that the Romans stayed here, with each newly arrived legion building on top of the remains of their predecessor's work. That makes it a complicated site to explore and dig up, hence the reason the work is taking so long. This is a reminder of how long the partnership between humans and horses has been going on for. Although the horseshoes of today are probably much more comfortable for the animals than these strange-looking objects were. If ancient Roman discoveries are your thing, here's another find that ought to delight you. It's a Roman bath from the 4th century, and it's just emerged from the sand dunes of Cadiz, Spain. The baths are partially ruined, but the fact that there's anything left of them at all is almost miraculous. Cadiz was founded by the Phoenicians more than 3,000 years ago, so the city was already ancient by the time the Romans arrived. It was then razed and smashed to the ground by the Visigoths as they conquered the south of Spain in the year 410. Much of what the Romans built was deliberately targeted, but the baths were spared. They can't have been open for very long before the Visigoths arrived. It's likely that they've survived for this long because it was buried by wind-whipped sand shortly after they were abandoned. While the damage done to the building in the past is extensive, there are still traces of the black, red, and white stucco that once decorated the walls. Even the marble cladding is still present in some areas. Rather than being built for a royal or a wealthy individual, the baths probably served as a communal space for the workers from the nearby fish farming and salting plants. We don't know what first drew the ancient Egyptians to the cliffs and rocks of Al Hamidiyah in Sohag, Egypt, and persuaded them it would make a great necropolis. But once they'd started using it, they didn't stop for a very long time. Archaeologists have thus far identified more than 250 rock cut tombs at the location, with the oldest being around 4,200 years ago, and the newest being around 2,000 years younger. That means the necropolis remained in use from the days of the Old Kingdom through to the end of the Ptolemaic era. For the first 1,000 years, it seems the burial space was reserved only for society's elite, with the tomb openings from this era leading to grand burial chambers and cross halls, some of which are elaborately decorated with hieroglyphs. One of them even has a mysterious false door the purpose of which is unknown. It's likely that the first people interred here were the rulers of Upper Egypt. 1,000 years later, though, the style of the tombs becomes less elaborate, and the people buried in them appear to be commoners. We have no idea what prompted the change. Back in China, a collection of 80 bronze mirrors was found in a cemetery in Shanxi province in April 2021. Excavations in Dabaozi village in the northwest part of the province 
began in May 2020 and have identified more than 400 graves from the Warring States and Western Han Dynasty periods thus far, but these mirrors are believed to be around 2,000 years old. We're lucky they were still there for the archaeologists to find because many of the graves have been looted in the distant past. In every case, the mirrors were placed next to the head of the deceased. Some of the artifacts were found surrounded by scraps of silk, so it's likely that they were originally placed in silk bags prior to burial. The items have been found with both men and women, so it appears that they might have been indicators of wealth and prestige, rather than gender. Inscriptions on the back of the mirrors include such generic phrases as long memory, family wealth, and eternal joy. It's not quite live, laugh, love, but it's not far off. The placement of the mirrors next to the head was presumably important, but sadly we don't know why. In September 2019, the south of Spain experienced a significant drought. The consequences of that drought weren't fun, but it did at least expose the site of a 4,000-year-old Spanish equivalent to Stonehenge in the Valdecanas Reservoir. The 150 stones that make up the circle are actually arranged in a shape that's closer to an oval and have been named the Dolmen of Guadalperal. It's thought likely that they were put in place by a community who lived on the banks of the River Tagus in either the Copper Age or the Bronze Age. This discovery confirms a rumor that began in the 1920s after German anthropologist Hugo Obermeier claimed to have seen the tips of an ancient structure in the reservoir. By the time he came back to take pictures, they disappeared again, and he had no witnesses to verify the claim. There are very few inscriptions on the stones, but a human-like figure and a snake can be seen at the foot of the largest of them. The purpose of the stone circle isn't known. It might have been a calendar or observatory of some kind, but it may just as easily have been a tomb. Finding a mass grave is an occupational hazard for an archaeologist. However, not every mass grave is connected to an atrocity. In some cases, they were just a convenient way to bury a lot of people at once. We think that's the case with this mass grave in central France, which was found close to Saint Dulchard in late 2020. The multiple occupants of the grave were buried during the Neolithic era, perhaps as long ago as 5,000 years. While the grave isn't necessarily a sign of foul play or mass murder, the people buried in it weren't laid to rest with much dignity. The grave is little more than a rectangular pit, 15 feet long and 6 feet wide. From the outline visible around the bones, it looks like there was once a wooden structure inside it to act as a form of frame, or perhaps a means of access. There are 40 skeletons here in total, although at least 10 were added long after the first 30. This is the only known mass burial in the region, although collective burials were common across the Parisian basin 6,000 years ago. Archaeologists in Egypt are currently scouring the country at the behest of the government, tasked with finding new pieces of Egyptian history in the hope they'll appeal to tourists. Most of their major discoveries happened in the sand of the deserts, but there are exceptions. Here's the biggest exception possible. It's a 3,000-year-old statue that turned up right in the middle of an urban area of Cairo. The area has been somewhat unkindly described as a slum by the international press. We're not sure that's fair, but it's certainly not the kind of place you'd expect a statue of this size to turn up. It's broken into several pieces now, but before it was deliberately deposited here and then submerged in filthy groundwater, it would have been 26 feet tall. The quartzite sculpture has unfortunately been badly worn away by the conditions it's been trapped in, but after a lengthy cleaning operation, archaeologists have identified it as a statue of the famous pharaoh Ramses II. It will spend a little more time being studied by academics before it's moved across the city to its new home in the Grand Egyptian Museum. Gobekli Tepe in Turkey is already one of the world's most famous archaeological sites, but might it also have been the focal point 
of a Neolithic-era skull cult? That's the question that's been asked after a recent archaeological survey in the area. The hillside site contains some of the oldest known human-made megalithic buildings in the world, seemingly carved from limestone for ritualistic purposes. There don't appear to be any complete human burials at Gobekli Tepe, but a few skulls have been found, and a 2017 analysis shows that they've been subjected to unusual modifications. The skulls all have holes drilled into the left parietal bone, as well as deep grooves that start at the forehead and run round to the back of the skull and the mandible. The remains of red ochre have also been detected on the bones. The incisions were made using tools, so the act was clearly intentional. Scalping has been ruled out as a cause, although partial defleshing may have occurred. The drilled holes might have enabled a mask or other decoration to be fitted to the skull, or perhaps a space for a hook to be attached so the skull could be hung from a wall. It would be a strange decoration to hang on your wall, but who are we to second-guess our ancestors? Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!